This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Honey. It's never been a more dangerous time to be an American cop. Just look no further than the fact that in the year 2020, the number of police officers who died in the line of duty was more than double that of 2019. Mm -hmm. And when I say don't look any further than that, it's because the leading cause of death for police officers in 2020 was uh, COVID-19, oh. which killed more cops that year than every other cause of death combined. But hey, at least they're all getting vaccinated now. Oh, they're not. Okay, well, at least they're wearing masks. Oh, they're not doing that either. Uh, well, okay then. Look, it might not seem as if the police are taking threats to their health seriously, but that's simply not true. While cops are not afraid of COVID-19, despite it being their current leading cause of death, they are in fact deathly afraid of a much more serious health hazard, fentanyl. Don't even say that too loud. You might get it. And a little droplet could kill thousands. Uh, that fear is, it, it is pretty warranted. Prescription opioid drugs in this country have been racking up a serious body count over the past few years. And fentanyl alone uh, accounts for around half of these fatal overdoses with tens of thousands of fentanyl deaths per year. Just two milligrams, two milligrams of fentanyl is enough to kill. So yeah, pretty scary stuff. It's like, it's like if, if this was inside of a bug in Australia, we would make jokes about it. Yeah. But it's on the streets, damn it. Imagine something like this fentanyl, except you breathe it in, and then for the next couple weeks, you're give breathing out yeah. fentanyl and giving it to other people. That, that's, that's especially scary. It's a good thing we don't have anything like that. Yeah, well, this is all pretty scary stuff, right? And what's especially scary is that people are unknowingly consuming fentanyl in drugs like cocaine and MDMA that have been cut with it. And, you know, that's been happening for a long time. Yeah. Shit is cut. A lot of, uh, a lot of people dying. Mm -hmm. uh, so be careful out there. Luckily, there's like testing strips and yeah. whatnot. But uh, even scarier than all that is that uh, apparently fentanyl is so dangerous that simply touching it, even just for a moment, can just drop you dead in your tracks. Mm -hmm. It sounds ridiculous, but recently the San Diego County Sheriff's Department released a video showing exactly that scenario playing out during a traffic stop in which fentanyl powder was discovered. In body cam footage, an officer is seen handling some evidence and within seconds, he's on the ground, not breathing. He drops like a tree. If not for the quick reflexes of his fellow officer who administers <laughs> two doses of the anti-overdose drug Narcan and calls an ambulance, this officer would certainly be dead. I, I for sure thought you were going to say that someone down at the Shake Shack had put fentanyl in his milkshake. <laughs> like, look. Be careful out there, uh, guys. Uh, except, look, this is actually total fucking bull bullshit, or at least it almost certainly is, according to pretty much every actual medical professional who deals with opioid overdoses for a living. Here's the New York Times. The only way to overdose is from injecting, snorting, or some other way of ingesting it, said Dr. Ryan Marino, medical director of toxicology and addiction medicine at University Hospitals in Cleveland. You cannot overdose from secondhand contact. Professor Leo Boletsky, another health expert they spoke with, said it was, quote, not biologically possible to experience overdose symptoms or to die from touching or being exposed to fentanyl. And this overdosing cop was probably just having a panic attack. Oh. Only touching fentanyl in skin patch form, not powder, uh, would lead to absorption through the skin. And even cases where that has happened and been fatal, they are exceptionally rare. Um, which well, I was going to say, when, like it, me, an average person, if someone like was like, hey, and toss something at me, and they're like, that's fentanyl, and I, it was a believable scenario where it could have been, I might faint because yeah. everything you hear about it I is that, that it is instant death. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's especially scary since uh, up until this point, no other drug has uh, simply entered your body through just being in the same room with it. Yeah. But, uh, look, I may faint, but our boys in blue shouldn't be fainting on the job. Uh, yeah, you would hope not. Yeah, they go through rigorous training to avoid fainting at the slightest sign of danger. Sort of important. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't pull his gun out and try to shoot the fentanyl. I mean, yeah, he didn't have time. Oh. Fentanyl was too quick. It's these damn regulations. The cop, you know, if, if we wanted our cops to tackle this problem the right way, they would have guns drawn, safety off at all times. But no, no, you have to, they got to reach into their holster and pull it out. Instead of holsters, they should have holsters that hold the guns pointed directly out with the safety off. They should have a gun mounted to their head. A body camera and a gun. Yeah, yeah. 
and someone behind a computer gets to pull the trigger. Yeah. Like the drone guys. Yeah, now that we're not in Afghanistan, all those drone pilots, give them a new job operating... Yeah. They're uh, gun the, pilots. Operating police helmet guns. Yes. Anyways, in an interview with ABC 10 News San Diego, where this incident took place, uh, the Dr. Marino from before, he expanded on how this officer was obviously not actually ODing, saying, quote, the symptoms being displayed are not consistent with an opioid overdose. The officer who is experiencing symptoms is breathing on his own. He is maintaining his airway. Even looking up close at his eyes, which are open, which is atypical, he doesn't have the pinpoint pupils that we would expect to see. He never loses his coloring or kind of turns blue. And uh, Professor Bolecki from before told the outlet, you would need to be in a room where lots of powder was constantly in the air for hours in order to start ingesting enough of it to experience these symptoms. So we did a test. We put a pile <laughs> of fentanyl in the middle of the room, and we got a bunch of fans and just turned them all on and sat. And we saw how long we could stay We had our alive. friend Mike Lindell fill his signature pillows, not with uh, material yeah. that would make them soft, but rather with mountains of fentanyl. And we had a little pillow fight mm -hmm. just to see what would happen. Oh, don't worry. I know a guy where we can get some fentanyl. Oh, you already have it? <laughs> Oh, I was just checking. Okay. Well, how about some crack? Never mind. We'll then. need to wake up afterwards. You don't want to mix the uppers and the downers. <laughs> Real bad news. Yeah. Uh, Marino and Boletsky popped up in a lot of news reports calling bullshit on all of this, and that's because they are co-authors of one of the more recent actual published studies on this phenomenon of fentanyl misinformation. That study, titled Fentanyl Panic Goes Viral, The Spread of Misinformation About Overdose Risk from Casual Contact with Fentanyl in Mainstream and Social Media, found that misinformation about the risks of fentanyl exposure is all over the internet and the news media, despite there being plenty of peer-reviewed medical research refuting it. And that's good to hear, because I was one of the people that had just... T Look, I'm not around fentanyl yeah. or drugs cut with fentanyl, I, so it's just like, yeah, that's dangerous, every, I'll stay away. Everything I know about fentanyl, I know for uh, second and third hand. I will continue, as I've done for decades, avoiding this fentanyl. Yeah. However, if I were in a position, in a career perhaps, where I may handle fentanyl from time to time, I would, I would hope that I would have, uh, you know, a better grasp on uh, yeah, the that, dangers of well, the Well, yes, substance. Elliot, in that case, of <laughs> course you would want some kind of base level of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, you, you or you're addicted to Narcan. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, the only way I can get the shot is if I fake a fentanyl overdose. The, I mean, <laughs> the, I, it's so funny in so many of these stories, because like Narcan is very powerful. Like if you're overdosing on opioids, opioids one puff of Narcan is like enough to at least stabilize you and get you to the hospital alive. And these mm -hmm. cops are just like popping like three, four Narcans. <laughs> yeah, Every they're time. like Jason Statham in that uh, movie where he has to have sex to stay alive. Oh, crank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're all cranked up on Narcan. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of peer-reviewed studies that refute all this, like this 2017 study uh, by the American College of Medical Toxicology, which found that, quote, the risk of clinically significant exposure to emergency responders is extremely low. And you this would be good news for uh, yeah. ambulance drivers, too, and yeah. anyone that's first responder. You'd have to really fuck up. You'd have to fall face first into a mountain of fentanyl for this to happen. Yeah. You'd have to stick your finger in the patient's nose or mouth, get a big old scoop of it, and then shove it right into your nose or mouth. Well, you see, uh, sir, I was making out with the suspect, so yeah. that's how I had the The exposure. suspect was hot, so I... <laughs> she I also gave me COVID-19. Yeah. Oh, COVID-19? Oh, to take some time off. <laughs> anyway, more recently, in a study by, ironically, UC San Diego, and uh, published in the International Journal of Drug Policy, uh, found that there's a widespread false belief among cops that touching fentanyl leads to overdose. From the press release for that study, quote, although the law enforcement officers interviewed were able to point to stories through word of mouth or in the news of on-duty officers or first responders who allegedly overdosed on scene from touching fentanyl, in some instances requiring naloxone to revive them, the researchers say that there are no confirmed cases of fentanyl overdoses through the skin. The symptoms described in these news and social media stories are indicators of a panic attack, e.g. rapid heartbeat, chest pain, hyperventilating, rather than overdose symptoms, e.g. lowered heart rate, sleepiness, and slowed or stopped breathing. So where did this idea come from? Uh, well, in 2016, the DEA issued a memo warning all U.S. law enforcement agencies that a tiny amount of fentanyl can be absorbed through your skin and can kill you. So there it was. The DEA said so, and they would never lie about anything. Uh, the mo our most noble law enforcement agency, mm -hmm. the DEA. 
Uh, not long after, news stories of police officers narrowly avoiding death after simply being near some powdered fentanyl started appearing more and more uh, often in local news media, which generally just uh, accepts police department statements as fact. Yeah, they're, like, they're this is what the police said. Yeah, yeah, the local news, I mean, first of all, they don't have enough funding to really, like, investigate this stuff. And yeah. secondly, like, they, they essentially just serve the interests of the police and the local governments and real estate developers in most cases. And in a lot of cases, uh, wouldn't want to... Uh, Rustle any feathers yeah. uh, by questioning uh, the the narrow escape from death that one of the, the city's yeah. servants yeah. had survived. Yeah, wow. Um, Sounds yeah. believable. Might get a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Um, but yeah, experts quickly started coming out and explaining uh, that what these police departments were claiming was not physically possible, but the idea had already caught on among police and among consumers of local media. So here we are. Yeah. And to further demonstrate that this is all just a case of mass hysteria, in the following days after the San Diego Sheriff's Department released their video, there were multiple other reports of officers in other parts of the country overdosing or nearly overdosing on fentanyl during searches. What all these reports from the last few years lack, though, is any actual medical proof that these <laughs> cops were actually overdosing. When asked who diagnosed the cop in San Diego with an overdose, the sheriff clarified that he'd been the one to provide the diagnosis, not a doctor. <laughs> So me and Elliot went out and bought some fentanyl, and it's been sitting in the room the entire time. Yeah, let's test it out. I feel fine. I feel great. We'll touch it later. Yeah, let's give it a good smack. Uh, the sheriff also clarified, and this is interesting, they clarified that uh, this actually was not a case of skin contact causing a fentanyl overdose. I don't know how anyone got that idea. The officer was wearing nitrile gloves at the time and had actually breathed in the fentanyl from six inches away while handling it. He was, mm -hmm. you know, moving it around. He was about this close, and oh my gosh. Like a smoke bomb. Instantly when his nose, uh, instantly took him down, which, okay, pretending for a second that any of this is true, and it's not just total fucking bullshit, what's something that the officer could have maybe done to prevent this from happening? Prevent the, uh, you know, little flex, little little molecules of fentanyl from entering his airway? What Absolutely of, fucking nothing. Per perhaps something he could have worn over his mouth, and nose, something designed specifically to prevent the wearer from breathing in small particles. I mean, such a thing, if it existed, could potentially save countless lives. A hammer and sickle? They should really look into that. Sounds like communist bullshit to me, Elliot. I refuse to wear this device that protects my lungs. Mm -mm. Anyways, if I God was... wants me to breathe in fentanyl, I should uh, clarify for the fact that we are putting this episode on YouTube that we did not purchase any illicit drugs, and that would be ridiculous. Yeah. The very idea that we would have a plate of fentanyl just sitting in this room is ridiculous, and, and therefore should have been taken as a joke, but we're on I like to live YouTube. on the wild side. I just leave loose fentanyl out. Yeah, it's like a, a, a fruit fly trap. Yeah. You, that way, if any, if any uh, drug users come in here, it, it k kills them instantly, so they don't do anything. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. uh, but speaking of COVID-19, uh, despite there being plenty of at-risk Americans who steadfastly refuse to vaccinate themselves, there are other people out there getting the vaccine despite their own risk of infection being, in fact, exceptionally low. And no, we're not talking about people with strong immune systems. I have an immune system. Or people who have been following health guidelines to an extreme and almost deranged degree. Uh, no, we're talking about Panta Petrovic a Serbian hermit who has lived in a cave for the last 20 years. Here's France 24. Almost 20 years ago, Panta Petrovic made social distancing a lifestyle choice when he moved into a tiny Serbian mountain cave to avoid society. Last year, on one of his visits to town, the dreadlocked man with a long beard found out there was a pandemic raging. After vaccines against COVID-19 became available, he got jabbed and urges everyone to do the same. Quote, it, the virus, does not pick. It will come here to my cave, too, the 70-year-old told AFP in his cave on the forested Stara Planina mountain in southern Serbia. After the vaccines became available, he rolled up his sleeve and got jabbed. Petrovic said he, quote, doesn't understand the fuss some vaccine <laughs> skeptics make and underlined that he believes in a process that aims to eradicate diseases. Quote, I want to get all three doses, including the extra one. I urge every citizen to get vaccinated, every single one of them. Take it from me, a cave hermit. Yeah, look. If he can do it, why can't you? I know. This literal cave hermit trusts science more than your typical southern U.S. suburbanite. And that's just really something. But something I totally believe. Yeah. 
anyways, that's where we're at now. And uh, in case you're wondering about Mr. Petrovic, the article goes into a lot more detail on his very interesting way of life. The cave Petrovic calls home is accessible only by a steep climb that is not for the faint-hearted. It is equipped with an old rusty bathtub, which he uses as a toilet, some benches, and a stack of hay that serves as a bed. That's all I need. <laughs> Always a nature lover, he gradually found out that isolating from society brings him freedom he never tasted before. Quote, I was not free in the city. There is always someone in your way. You either argue with your wife, neighbors, or the police, Petrovic told AFP while peeling vegetables for lunch. Here, nobody is hassling me, the man added with a smile, revealing his decaying teeth. Petrovic mostly feeds on mushrooms and fish from the local creek, but also hikes downtown in search of leftover food in the bins. He's living life. At my wife... Oh, I never heard the yeah. end of it. So I went to a cave and I live as a hermit. Yeah, he, I mean, he apparently he was married several times and it just never worked out. He's like, all oh, this nagging. You know, one of these days, I'm going to go live in the cave. I know of a good one. And he fucking did it. He did it. Yeah. Out of principle. Nobody's going to out bluff this guy. That bitch can't find me here. <laughs> can't pay alimony if you can't find me out in my cave. Mm -hmm, but I'll eat her leftovers. Uh, here's some more from that article. Before isolating, Petrovic donated all the money he had made abroad to the community by funding the construction of three small bridges in the town. Quote, money is cursed. It spoils <laughs> people. I think nothing can corrupt a human like money, Petrovic told AFP. On top of one of the bridges, Petrovic built a pigeon loft, which he, despite his advancing age, effortlessly climbs in order to stock them with pieces of bread he found while searching the bin. And yeah, this guy, he's not alone out there. He actually, he's got a lot of friends, but they are, they're they all animals. He's, he's a huge animal lover. Yeah. His posse is quite large. It includes goats, chickens, about 30 dogs and cats, and a huge wild boar named Mara that he mm. found as a piglet trapped in some bushes. Saved Mara's life. <sighs> he's Quote, lucky that didn't grow up before he found it, because feral hogs, they'll get he, you. He's got one, between one and one feral hog, and yeah. he, he loves yeah. that hog. Quote, she means everything to me. I love her, and she listens to me. There is no money that can buy such a thing. A true pet. This is literally the beginning of the movie Pig, starring Nicolas Cage. Yeah? <laughs> he rejects society and embraces uh, um, the companionship of a pig? It's not a spoiler. It's the premise of the entire no, I, movie. Yeah. He, so, yes. <laughs> this is, And he is a hermit who lives in a... Who li literally rejected society and goes to live in the woods and lives with his fucking pig. And every once in a while sells some truffles. Yeah. I mean, this guy, he... Yeah, he eats mushrooms. He eats wild mushrooms. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, he, this guy probably smells like fucking death, but sounds like he's got a great life. They they, they got him with the jab like a dart player. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> if you stay there, we'll put a big red mark on your arm. Boom! All right, now get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you bother me. <laughs> And while we're here, let's just give you all these other shots, you know, yeah. just in case. Thum, 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 thum. <laughs> we brought in Olympian, gold medal Olympian <laughs> dart fucking, what are, what are they called, darts? Isn't, don't they have a different name for it, or is it actually just darts? I don't know. Yeah. Is darts Olympic sport? Well, if it isn't, it should be, because they got very tiny bullseyes. Yeah. Uh, those unlike, archers. Unlike those shooters those with stupid the stupid archers. The fucking, like, mask and Yeah, with those laser guides and, yeah. and all kinds of shit. Come on. Get out of here. Anyways, elsewhere on the European continent, uh, there are, unfortunately, plenty of people who have gone down the same anti-vaccine -ra rabbit hole as we've seen here in the U.S. And like here, some of these people also, uh, ironically and horrifyingly, work in healthcare. Seems like a bad mix, but there's a lot of them. It won't be a mix for very long, uh, considering that uh, hospitals were one of the first uh, major things, at least in this country, to mandate the vaccine. Yeah, not enough of them, though. Mm. Not And not in the states where this is probably uh, the biggest problem. Sure. Anyway, back in February, we had an anti-vax pharmacist here in the U.S. who uh, intentionally let his vaccine supply spoil outside of the fridge. And then he administered useless doses to dozens of people. <laughs> they think they're getting vaxxed. Uh, but they're not. Well, anyway, over in Germany, they've had something similar happen recently. An allegedly anti-vax nurse allegedly injecting thousands of people with salt water instead of the vaccine. Here's the BBC. Authorities in North Germany have asked more than 8,000 people to get repeat COVID vaccinations because a nurse is suspected of having injected saline instead of vaccine in many cases. Police are investigating the nurse's actions at a vaccination center in Friesland near the North Sea coast. Initially, just six people were believed to have received the harmless salt solution there in March and April. And many of those affected were aged over 70, a high-risk group in the pandemic. Inspector Peter Beer, 
Awesome. Quoted by Elliot, you're going to have to read this. Süddeutsche Zeitung. There you go. Said the 40 year old woman had been sharing corona critical information on social media, criticizing the government's restrictions aimed at curbing the virus's spread. Regional broadcaster NDR says 8,557 people have been asked to go back for repeat vaccinations. And so far, about 3,600 new appointments have been confirmed. These people are real life uh, Gotham villains. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Batman, you fool! I've changed all the vaccines out with salt water. It literally sounds like something the Joker would do, where it's like you're in. What? Because what you're doing is giving people a false sense of hope that they can reacclimate with doing normal yeah. things, and uh, then they go out and in some cases, could fucking die. Ha ha ha! They'll be out there at the restaurants and the bars thinking that they're safe when they're not. Yes. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's some diabolical. Real diabolical shit. It's and, actual uh, real-life Earth villain shit. Yeah. Okay, so this nurse was initially caught back in April having given saline doses to just a few people. And her excuse at the time was that she had dropped a vaccine vial on the floor and she didn't want to get in trouble. Uh, so, you know... She improvised. Not not ideal. My bad. But then, of course, police started looking into it, and they found that either this nurse was dropping a whole lot of vials on the floor, or she was doing this on purpose. Uh, anyway, here's to hoping this person never works in healthcare again and faces appropriate legal repercussions for putting thousands of elderly people's lives at risk during a global pandemic. Want to know how I got these SARS? Because SARS-CoV-2 is the... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll wait for you to finish laughing. Spe <laughs> Speaking of anti-vax morons, an interesting trend among these people since the beginning of the pandemic is that despite rejecting pretty much all health advice about the virus, every few months they get fixated on some secret wonder drug that's supposedly the real cure to the virus that the mainstream health industry just doesn't want them to know about. Like drinking your own piss. Mm -hmm. It works. <laughs> Hydroxychloroquine, though, was of course the big one, and that ended up eventually turning out to be a total dud. But the latest uh, one is ivermectin, a drug mainly used for treating horses with parasitic stomach worms. Oh, perfect. Well, if it doesn't cure the COVID, at least it won't have parasitic stomach worms. Yeah, can't hurt. And yeah, right off the bat, that seems pretty sus since coronavirus is a virus and uh, ivermectin is an anti-parasitic drug. Mm -hmm. And parasites and viruses are different. But to be fair, there is some evidence about uh, ivermectin's effect on COVID-19. Researchers in Australia did find that extremely high concentrations of ivermectin were effective against the virus in the lab. But also these concentrations were also like, they were much higher than the human body could possibly tolerate. It, it's similar to how like, just because it is true that bleach kills COVID, drinking bleach will not cure or prevent COVID and will instead just kill you or make you really sick. Yeah. It's like that. There's plenty of things that will kill the virus that have well, no it, business being. It in sounds the like, uh, like, yeah. Technically, you could overdose from marijuana, but the amount that it would yeah. take for you to do it is so astronomically large that it would be next to impossible yeah. to do it. It's like that, or literally impossible. Yeah. Uh, but even though taking uh, a cursory glance at the ivermectin COVID research would show you that this is basically useless, these people don't read things that they don't want to believe. They just want to hear the good news. Sure, does it work? Great, I'll try it. But not that John Krasinski good news. Yeah. Just I want my great good news straight from the source. Tucker John, Carlson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ivermectin, it of course, has been flying off the shelves, much to the dismay of horses everywhere who have had a very <laughs> bad month. I'm all full of worms over here. Didn't that lady punch the horse? Yeah, that's, we got that in the headline. Okay, we'll get to it. Uh, <laughs> horse news. Bad news for horses this month. Uh, anyways, uh, of course, you know, by shelves. Flying off the shelves. Which shelves would those be? The animal feed store oh, shelves. Oh, right. Uh, which they, those stores have had to put up signs letting shoppers know that they are wasting their money buying this horse deworming paste to treat and prevent COVID-19. Go back to the aquarium stores oh my with God. your hydroxychloroquine. Yeah, oh, that, people literally died taking that shit. Yeah. Uh, anyways, rather than just completely dismiss these claims about ivermectin and other drugs, McMaster University in Canada has actually spent 2021 testing as many potential COVID treatments as possible in what they're calling the TOGETHER trial. And the results about ivermectin are in. It doesn't work. Oh, man. There is something out there you could get, though. A, there's a vaccine. Oh, what? Oh, you mean the Fauci ouchie? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, here's the LA Times. Ivermectin, the latest supposed treatment for COVID-19 being touted by anti-vaccination groups, had 
No effect whatsoever on the disease, according to a large patient study. That's the conclusion of the TOGETHER trial, which has subjected several purported non-vaccine treatments for COVID-19 to carefully designed clinical testing. The trial is supervised by McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada, and conducted in Brazil. One of the trial's principal investigators, Edward Mills of McMaster, presented the results from the ivermectin arms of the study at an August 6th symposium sponsored by the National Institutes of Health. Among the 1,500 patients in the study, he said ivermectin showed no effect whatsoever on the trial's outcome goals whether patients required extended observation in the emergency room or hospitalization. Quote, in our specific trial, he said, we did not see the treatment benefit that a lot of the advocates believe should have been seen. The article also quotes one of the lead researchers talking about how fucking annoying Ivermectin's advocates have been throughout this team's research. We, c we couldn't even go down to the feed store and pick it up ourselves. These people are all over it. <laughs> Quote, I've had enough abuse and so have the other clinical trialists doing Ivermectin. Others working in this area have been threatened. Their families have been threatened. They've been defamed. I can think of no circumstances in the past where this kind of abuse has occurred to clinical trialists. We need to figure out a system where we have each other's backs on these issues because the abuse that certain individuals have received is shocking. Yeah, this sucks. Uh, when asked whether he expected further criticism now that the study is finished, he said, the advocacy groups have set themselves up to be able to critique any clinical trial. They've already determined that any valid, well-designed critical trial was set up to fail. Yeah. That's, Fake news. That's the cool thing about con being a conspiracy theorist is... Uh, Reality uh, has even, no bearing even on Even if end. you're just constantly wrong, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, J Donald Trump's going to be president again on August 13th. Oh, he, he isn't? All right, well... We meant August 13th, 2022, yeah. you idiot. Yeah. Stupid. You fell for it. Yeah. Yeah, they even, like, the, <laughs> these researchers, they were... They bent over backwards because they started the trial and then all the, the psychos are just like, you're not you're not giving the people enough of it. And like, you're only giving them one dose. You should be giving them like three doses over like the course of, and they're like, fine, fine. We'll start over again and do it your way just to show you whether this works or not. I guess we'll find out. And uh, yeah, even, even still, they just got harassed the entire fucking time. Great shit. Yeah. It. It's becoming more and more uh, or, or less and less appealing to get into any field uh, that would be life-saving, planet-saving, anything to do with anything that uh, would help society as a whole. Yeah. Uh, because there seems to be just uh, a very large vocal group of people in nearly every country that will do whatever they can to stop you from trying to help things. We're because doomed. They want to bring upon the end times. It is written in the goddamn Bible. It is. Why are these people getting in front, getting in front of God? Let us all die. Let us all fucking die. Anyway, uh, speaking of delusional right-wing garbage, uh, here's a fun little update to our previous video where we talked about pillow salesman Mike Lindell's big election fraud symposium where he failed yet again to prove in any way that the 2020 election was fraudulent. Uh, so remember how at one point Lindell claimed to have been physically attacked by Antifa during the conference? Uh, last night I was attacked. I was attacked. And yeah, I still hurts a little bit. Well, uh, here's the Associated Press with uh, a little more detail on that attack. My pillow chief executive, Mike Lindell, says he was aggressively poked by someone seeking a <laughs> selfie in Sioux Falls, South Dakota this week, which led him to say he was attacked. Lindell, who hosted an election fraud symposium in the city this week, told the conservative talk show Flashpoint that he was approached by a man who wanted a photo on Wednesday night. Quote, he put his arm around and stuck his finger. It was so much pressure. I just knew if I did anything, something more was coming, Lindell said, gesturing to his side. He jammed it in where it was just piercing pain. Now, um, it's almost like this uh, My Pillow guy is a bit of a liar or... Uh, Really uh, heightened it to yeah. sell the narrative that Antifa was attacking his event. He likes telling tall tales, this pillow man. Um, yeah, remember when Antifa was just about to break through the doors and take over the cyber symposium? And then uh, Zach Patrizzo just went outside and looked, and it was a bunch of people just frolicking in a parking lot? Not even a bunch of people. Three people yeah. frolicking in a parking lot. I mean, that's how they get you. It's a trick. Yeah. Oh, look, that person looks friendly. God! Yeah. Yeah. Next thing you know... Fist to the face, teeth flying everywhere. Yeah, they hit you with a bike lock, and they, they throw a milkshake at your head. And, and soup cans. Yeah, soup for my family. Yes. <laughs> From my family to yours! <laughs> Anyways, speaking of right-wing hucksters, 
We've actually got a bit of a Matt Gates update for you. Oh, good. Despite all the allegations against him and the fact that his close friend and wingman, Joel Greenberg, took a plea deal a few months back to cooperate with investigators, Gates still hasn't been formally charged with anything. But ABC News reported last week that their sources have shown them some of the evidence that Greenberg has shared with prosecutors. Uh, and it definitely implicates Matt Gates in his crimes. From their reporting, ABC News has reviewed Google Voice text messages from September 2018 that appear to show Greenberg texting with a woman he met online. In the text, Greenberg appears to discuss payment options and asks the woman, who was of legal age, if she would take drugs. He then sets up a get-together with himself, Gates, the woman, and one of her friends. Quote, I have a friend flying in and we are trying to make plans for tonight. What are your plans for later? Greenberg wrote to the woman, whose identity ABC News is withholding for privacy purposes. And how much of an allowance will you be requiring, smiley face, Greenberg added. The woman responded by telling Greenberg she has a friend who introduced me to the website that I could bring and said she usually requires $400 per meet. Wait, can you say uh, that that's allowance, please? <laughs> $400 for school, right? For soup for your family? <laughs> It continues, Greenberg then sent the woman a photo of Gates taking a selfie with students at Pea Ridge Elementary. Gross. From yeah, a what a weird choice of photo. Uh, from a 2017 visit and wrote, my friend, indicating that Gates would be the friend joining him. Ooh, my friend thinks he's really cute, the woman responded. Ugh. Greenberg then replied that Gates was, quote, down here only for the day, adding, we work hard and play hard, gross, <sighs> before asking, have you ever tried Molly? <laughs> Referring to the drug MDMA or ecstasy. As Greenberg was discussing payment for the get-together, the woman asked if Gates used the same website Greenberg had used to meet her. Greenberg replied in part, he knows the deal, smiley face, referring to the Florida congressman. The former tax collector then said he would book a suite downtown for the gathering. But again, Matt Gates hasn't been charged with anything in the four months since the allegations against him first came out. And uh, yeah, it's certainly frustrating that we keep getting articles like this that shed light on the allegations while seemingly nothing is actually happening on the, on the law enforcement side. Seemingly. Except for just, I guess, people at the Justice Department and the FBI just leaking like crazy to like the Daily Beast, the New York Times, and everyone else. Yeah, um, it's not that nothing's happening. It's that they are slowly compiling what would, if gets pushed forward, a monumental case yeah, against a very well-known it's, it's, it's congressman. A, it's a lot trickier to prosecute elected officials, especially at the federal level, for crimes. So I would imagine they're being very careful, dotting their I's, crossing their T's, making sure they have a solid case before proceeding at all. Because this, yeah, this is a very delicate matter. Yes. Um, but yeah, the wheels of justice, they are very slow in this country, especially when it comes to the rich and powerful. And yeah, Matt Gates could certainly just walk away from this completely unscathed. That is not out of the question at all. In fact, I'd be maybe more surprised if he if something actually did happen. Yeah. Um, anyway, only time will tell. The most consequences that these people have faced, any of them, uh, of the latest couple of years, is like having their Twitter access revoked. <laughs> Which is which, the worst crime you could possibly commit against which, them. Which, honestly, specifically relating to these type of people, is actual punishment, whether yeah. you'd like to admit the fact that it is or not. Yes, they should face actual punishment for things that they do if they've actually done crimes. But, like, t taking Marjorie Taylor Greene's Twitter away, it's just, you know, she's so steamed every time it happens. Stop! Gotta go down to the CrossFit Center and bang some dudes! <laughs> Allegedly! Ugh! <laughs> Ugh! I need to go do some pull-ups that are just going to destroy my back because I'm doing them too fast, in bad form. And then I'm going to burn a bunch of taxpayer money going around the entire country holding rallies to make more money to hold more rallies with Matt Gates of all people. Yeah. Who, in a scenario you could come up with that would be believable because of all of the allegations about both of them, are probably on an MDMA sex fest at every hotel they stay at. Yeah. Allegedly. They both are insatiable, so it would it would scam. <laughs> They're the perfect match! Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she's his type, though. She's a little bit old. She's a little bit country. He's a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. So, you know, opposites attract and all that. Ugh. And somehow Palmer Lucky's sister's in the middle of it all. Yeah. Hypothetically, of course. Anyways, before we get to the uh, headlines half of the show, we got a lot of headlines this week. This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Shopping for new clothes can be time-consuming, tedious, and expensive. Fortunately, Stitch Fix makes it easy to find the clothes you love. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, 
and is the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. There's no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces that you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the U.S. and the U.K. as well. Get started today at stitchfix.com weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com weird. And this episode is sponsored by Honey. Mm -hmm. We all shop online. We've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart. Honey sports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Then you wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if it finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop. Hell, I got 10% off. I bought Elliot a hot dog on a surfboard holding an American flag. Wow. I didn't really, because he said it was atrocious. Yeah, it's the most horrifying product I've ever seen. But I could have got a discount on it. You could have. Yes. Why didn't you just buy it for yourself? Because I already have a hot dog. Yeah, you're a collector. Yeah. What's one more hot dog? Well, I I thought it would be cheeky to get it for you, but obviously, <laughs> you know, my gifts go un uh, unloved. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Honey has, has found its over 17 million members. Over, must hate America. Over $2 billion in savings. Hot dogs, flags, baseball. This man hates America. Send this man to North Korea. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We would never recommend something we don't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. All right, now into the weirdest, wildest, craziest headlines from around the world this week, starting with Houston man shot six times last week, still waiting for surgery at hospital overwhelmed by COVID-19. Please help what me. What year is it? What month is it? Yeah. Oh, it's 2021? It's mm -hmm. it's August 2021. And we've got uh, dudes just sitting there full of bullets being like, uh, hold, excuse me, when when do you think I can get the, all these bullets removed from my body? Just keep your fingers in the wounds. Hold on, buddy. We, we're, we're dealing with some stuff out here. Also, we're going to move your bed to the parking garage. You know, we'll put up some like Did you plastic. see the, the photo of like they ran out of... I don't know the context of this, so I, I shouldn't bring it up, but there is a photo floating around of, of someone that had to be transferred from a hospital in Florida to a different hospital because they ran out of ICU beds, and they're transporting them on a private plane in a full hospital, because it, it has to fit a full hospital bed yeah. with all the fucking beeping machines, and it's like, you're just looking at it, and it's like, it's watching money burn on a level yeah. uh, that would be, like, like, the U.S. military would spend. Just like, uh... And, and, like, I think still it's technically until it's fully FDA approved, like, the government is footing the bill for all of the COVID stuff, regardless of whether or not yeah. you're vaccinated or not. Yeah. So it's just taxpayer money just getting pissed into the wind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all over the South, they're just, like, they're literally running out of beds. They're they're setting up, like, <laughs> lobbies and even, like, parking lots just as, like, overflow ICUs. The, it's the, uh, uh, the, uh, the semi, the semi cooling trucks are back, uh, being parked outside of hospitals and shit now. It's like, yeah, I, I love America. I love loves a reboot. We're just, we're just going all the way back. Next, and younger people now too. Yeah, younger people and, now, and well, maybe those navy ships can come back too. Those big hospital ships, uh, bring if, those back. If Biden, uh, we can all clap. If Biden sends the fighter jets to fly over the hospitals again, I am gonna have a great time. Heroes, thank you to you, our heroes. We, t we did something that brought all of the hospital workers outside to see a big demonstration for minutes while uh, they could be inside tending to the sick. It was great. Dying. I spent the last like year and a half just watching people constantly die, uh, really slow and horrific deaths. Um, but today I got to see some F-18s fly overhead and they were loud and they were fast. Reminded me of what I love about America. And uh, yeah, you know, I love my job. Are the New Yorkers still going out and banging pots and pans? I don't think so. Mm. That would never fly in L.A. We're too spread out. People were doing it for a while. Yeah. I think it depended on the neighborhood. My brother, who lives very close to me, like early in the pandemic, he's like, oh, it's 6 o'clock. It's time. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then like his whole neighborhood, he lives in a slightly more... Uh, 
He lives close to me, but he lives more on the side of the tracks that's got those signs on the, the lawn that's like, in this house, we believe that love is love, that all, uh, black lives matter, that, and yeah. And so, yeah, definitely the kind of neighborhood you expect that. But I think that only lasts like a month because it's like, is this even a road where healthcare workers drive down? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's very strange. We didn't have any of that shit on my, on my block. Yeah. Well, maybe it's time to get back to it. Yeah, we, we, we didn't... Scare the COVID away. We didn't hit our pots and pans loud enough and look at where we are now. Back in the shit. Um, yeah, again, this sucks. Like, you know, at this point, it's like, it's just shocking to hear that this is still happening. But yes, this is all very serious stuff. Still uh, happening in some places. What do those places have in common? No one, no one knows. Can't say. Yeah, it's a mystery. Can't say, yeah. yeah. Speaking of which... Stunning new report ranks U.S. dead last in healthcare among richest countries, despite spending the most. I, for one, am shocked. Yeah, can't believe it. Wow. Telling me we spend the most. You think the 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 people researching this are just like, wait, what are administrative costs? (laughs) What the fuck? Wait. (laughs) They don't just provide healthcare to people who need it. They have to, like, send a bunch of paperwork through like 20 different administrators it's to all like stamp it. Yeah, and like hospitals have at least like 15 to 20 Miltons from office space Yeah, that have to deal with insurance companies and that's all they do. Is... And that's why everyone's claims get fucked up because it's getting passed between like 20 different hands yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, the, yeah, at some point in there, someone's probably going to fuck up because it's literally a job that shouldn't exist. It is, it is a redundant position. Well, also, and we spend the most because all of the fucking uh, uh, prescription drugs and life-saving drugs and everything that uh, could be, uh, the price have be mitigated with insurance is jacked way up because insurance exists and the yeah. insurance companies will pay for it. And all the hospitals negotiate individually. Yeah. Like, when, like, oh, we had to use a gauze pad. Yeah. That'll be $400. In the UK, the entire NHS negotiates. It's like, if you, you literally... Cannot, you're not going to be selling any of this shit to anyone in the UK, maybe a few private health clinics. If you want to sell it, you got to sell it to us. Yeah. So, And this is what we're going to pay. Take it or leave it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, someone should look into this. We should, yeah. Just like that climate change that everyone keeps talking about. Yeah, it would be crazy if, like, one of these days we had, like, a presidential candidate who, like, talked about maybe fixing that. No, Biden will go out and he'll be like, we need to solve this whole healthcare thingamajig. And then he'll drop the mic and everyone will clap. And then he'll hold a sign with the sign guy. Oh, the sign guy. Fucking sign guy. It's progress, baby. Yeah. This president gets memes. He's our first meme president. <laughs> Except no, he's not. He's not. Trump, 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 is, the Trump is the first meme president and uh, the reigning meme king. Yeah. St. Louis Taxi Company rejecting vaccinated and masked passengers. Well, this will work itself out. Yeah. I, I don't even mind this. Yeah, I guess it sucks for the people. They fixed the glitch. The people who got inconvenienced thinking that they were hailing a uh, normal person to drive them to the airport or whatever. Yeah. And then were told to leave. But... Said they got the cab driver from Ghostbusters. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I love this because I looked up a taxi company on Yelp and they got a couple recent reviews that are just like people talking about this thing but like going back years like it's all just negative it's just a bad company well taxi <laughs> companies suck yeah no they're all gonna have bad reviews no but one's it, happy to take a cab yeah I guess that's true yeah but um yeah now all the all the anti-vax people they have their own form of transportation where they can they can air out and roll those windows up and just breathe each other's air this and... is the one time where I think it's acceptable for someone to roll coal right into the passenger side window <laughs> of a <the> taxi cab <laughs> <laughs> There, somebody needs to come up with a eco-friendly way to roll coal. There's got to be a way, like yeah. uh, like a smoke machine. Yeah. That's just uh, vapor, right? Yeah, that's just uh, what's it's uh, dry ice, basically. Yeah. When you do it, uh, the techno song that goes that plays while you uh, while you do it. Yeah, there should, there, someone should someone should make that because mm-hmm. I would love to roll coal. I just I find it unconscionable. There was a venue called Freeze in South Florida when I was growing up, and uh, it would have been great for, like, EDM shows, I guess, but uh, I was thinking, like, a hardcore band or something at the time, and they would blast that super cold yeah. uh, smoke, and it just made absolutely fucking no sense. It was like, I was seeing like, Poison the Well or something, and there's, like, a breakdown, and it's just like, goosh, and people in the pit are just like, oh, I feel a lot better now. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. Anyways. California dad assaults teacher over masks on first day of school, superintendent says. 
America is back. I thought this school. was America. Yeah, this is uh, it. I it's so funny to me, it, like tragically funny. But like they're doing the whole back to school thing that they did last year, like exactly a year ago. This exact same fucking scenario happened, where all the schools are just like, well, I mean, these kids—they've been in Zoom class for six months, so let's let's send them back to the classroom. And now it's been an entire extra year, and the same shit is happening. They're all immediately having to shut down because COVID is immediately uh, being spread throughout. The student body. There's already been teachers that have died. There's already yeah. been teenagers that have died. It's uh, it's even worse than last year with the Delta variant, and they're still fucking doing it. Having said that, again, it fucking gotta suck to be a goddamn kid. Yeah, sure. But, like... Rather be alive. Yeah, it, yeah, I feel bad for the kids, but the parents who... Or maybe not. Life. This this life was... Why did you bring me into this life? I can't even fucking talk to parents people. who are sending their kids back to school, like, without masks. They don't care about their kids like mental well-being. No, they're they kids care about little, being right. They're yeah. God's little soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw, I think it was like a Twitter post. Like, I don't know if it was verifiable, but it was someone saying like uh, a teacher, <laughs> a teacher who like literally like is currently going like through chemotherapy treatments, a teacher in Florida, was just like, class, I know some of you, know, you don't have to wear a mask, but I'm just going to explain like I'm immunocompromised right now. I have cancer. Uh, if I get COVID, I will almost certainly die. So I'd appreciate if for me, for the sake of my health, you would uh, you would wear masks even if you don't want to. And then the next day, the exact same kids were wearing masks and not wearing masks. It had absolutely no effect on anyone. Eric Cartman, shut up! <laughs> ha ha! Uh, teachers immunocompromised. Let's kill teacher. Oh my god, that's fucked up. <sighs> Police investigating woman who allegedly posed as a doctor at Sydney Hospital for almost eight months. That woman's name, Malikia Love Robinson. Yes. You know, it's, uh, it was, I don't know. The, Australia is one of those countries that doesn't have the sunshine laws, so there's not a lot of information in this. But this woman, yeah, eight months. I, I don't know well, if Well, they're pretty desperate recently. Have you seen? Uh, yeah, I mean. It's, Wait, you, get, you, you said you got some training? All right, get her doctor? In. Yep, come over here. Do the surgery. I don't think she did any, like, real doctor stuff, but, I mean. Is there a doctor on the plane? Oh, a podiatrist. Is there a marine biologist? <laughs> Why, yes. George, you're a marine biologist. <laughs> uh, podiatry is important work. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, the feet are our connection with the earth. Yes. Everyone, uh, as the uh, boomer memes would say, take your socks off and go feel some grass. Yeah, touch grass. Scientists tweak daddy long legs genes to create daddy short legs. <laughs> They haven't known anything about the daddy part. Yeah, it's... Uh, don't, don't scientists know that daddy's been sexualized? Daddy short legs. Daddy short legs is a great name for, like, a, a corgi. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're doing this. Like, I, it's cool. Like, you don't hear about... Like, we have the technology to really do some, like, cool mad scientist shit, but no one's doing it. So, this, yeah, they're it's just like... more important. They're thing. literally, they're just like, uh, let, what if we took the daddy long legs and made his legs short, thus creating a daddy, daddy short legs, just to kind of see what would happen. Like the fentanyl, there's that's that other like uh, urban myth uh, that uh, the daddy long legs is the most poisonous spider. Not true. Yeah. Not true. Mm -hmm. Even if, uh, well, first of all, it's like physically impossible for them to even get close enough. But they are uh, not, not anymore with the short legs. They and can now, get close they want. Oh my God! <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> you were so concerned with whether you could that you didn't stop to think whether you should. Spiders are good. Uh, especially daddy long legs. Yeah. Catch a lot of bugs. They do. Mm -hmm. And harmless. Yep. Unless For now. You get, unless you put fentanyl on them. Now that we've uh, switched out the genes for the short legs, what if we took the gene that makes them not poisonous and made them super poisonous? Just to see what would happen. And just for shits and giggles, here's daddy long dick. <laughs> daddy long dick. Ladies. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino fulfills childhood promise of never giving mom a penny from fortune. Did she die? Is that the how he fulfilled the promise? No, he's just never given her money. Well, yeah, but to to the ultimate ending to this would be her dying and being like, yeah, and I ne not even on her fucking deathbed. Nah, she's still around. But yeah, he uh, he revealed recently. He's like, my mom used to give me all this shit for uh, writing scripts when I should have been doing my schoolwork. Yeah. And I was like, mom, you don't understand. I'm gonna be rich and famous someday. And she's like, shut up. And he's like, all right. Well, guess what? When I am rich and famous. You get nothing. Shut up and like, keep scrubbing my like, feet. Whatever. Fuck you. And then he got famous and he, yeah, he hasn't given her a single red cent. And uh, some other reporters, they finally reached out to her. And they're like, is this true? And she's like, look, 
I don't want to get into the drama of it. But yes, uh, I'm very proud of my son. <laughs> um, I live a comfortable life. I'm and, fine. And no, he has not given me any money. But I'm very proud of him. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, it doesn't sound like there's any bad blood there. But uh, I like I like that he stuck to his principles. Does he talk to her or is it just like a monetary thing? Uh, no, I, I, it sounds like they have a decent relationship aside from the fact that he refuses to, to lend her or give her money or buy her anything. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Woman sues McDonald's after complaining that a cheeseburger advert was so irresistible it caused her to break her fast during Lent. This is literally uh, like religious war crimes. Yeah. Yeah. This McDonald's. They've geez, launched a holy war. McDonald's should be banned from uh, advertising during the 40 days and 40 nights of Lent. And Ramadan. Yeah. Except for the McFish. Yes. Isn't that why they made it? They Which, no, they made it for the Catholics, right? Yeah. And the also, McFish. It's not called a McFish. I keep forgetting. Oh, <laughs> okay. it's, 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 it's the filet of fish. I can't even. I went in asking for a McFish, and they told me that a McFish doesn't exist. <laughs> I forgot about that. We covered it on the show. Where's the McFish? <laughs> it's the filet of fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, the, fish. That, the concept for that worked so well because it was a way for Catholics to still have yeah. McDonald's on Fridays? Yeah. Yeah. It's Fridays. Uh, so, yeah. The Lent. I grew up in the, uh, the Catholic Loser. Uh, world. And uh, yeah, I, believe, I mean, like originally, I think it was like you were supposed to avoid meat the whole 40 days. And then I guess that was hard. And then they changed it to just Fridays. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But uh, you can change some things in the Bible, huh? Yeah. Oh, I guess when it's convenient. Yes, exactly. They they love doing that. Yeah. There's a long history of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a fun religion. Yeah, they had they came up with that one loophole about sex uh, that they've been using for a while until they started getting caught in the past you know thirty or so years. No sex with other human adults. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you read between the lines, I mean, yeah, yikes! Yeah. Man accused of tattooing child inside fast food restaurant. <laughs> the, the cheeseburgers were so irresistible. Yeah. I had to bring my tattoo parlor inside the McDonald's. <laughs> Look, I was trying to tattoo this child in privacy, but it was Lent and I was, the stomach was rumbling and uh, we both decided to go down and get one of those irresistible cheeseburgers. And, uh, what do you mean you're out of McFish? <laughs> well, I got my tattoo. Can I plug this in? You got an outlet in here? Yeah. All right, I'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm going to give this child a tattoo. What do you want? SpongeBob? All right. <laughs> Uh, what well, the hell is an Among Us? I love that the headline is that he was just accused of doing it. <laughs> you can't prove shit. <laughs> <laughs> when we showed up, he was gone. <laughs> All we heard were the, the rumblings of some bystanders. That man is tattooing a child. Allegedly. <laughs> it could have been a, a, a clever prank. No. We're not sure. Police say thief stole Vietnam veteran's Purple Heart, traded it for a bottle of Mountain Dew. <laughs> this man is terrible at bartering. Give that man back his Purple Heart? Oh, I forgot about it. What was that? Uh, Mr. Uh, the guy who yelled Singh? at Trump for getting the Purple Heart. Yeah, that's in 2016. Whose uh, so, uh, son died. was a... Yeah, his son died. A gold star parent. Yeah, his gold yeah. star parent, Trump, uh, was a real fucking... Hey, look, I got one of these without, getting, without yeah. having to go to war. Give that man back his Purple Heart, Mr. Trump. Yeah. He didn't. But uh, yeah, this guy stole a Purple Heart, and he's like, well, it's cool. But what I could really use right now is a Code Red Mountain Dew. Because, uh, yeah, this Purple Heart isn't uh, giving me sustenance. Yeah. It's, it just exists. Purple Heart. Why well, get a Purple Heart when I can get purple shits drinking uh, you, a 24 You will get a Purple Heart after drinking enough Mountain Dew. <laughs> Died in the line of duty. Yeah. Pur- uh, Mountain Dew, uh, they're getting in the, uh, the seltzer game, which means seltzer is officially <laughs> over. <laughs> what is it like? So it's Mountain Dew flavored sparkling water? It's Mountain Dew flavored. The har- essence of hard, Dew. hard seltzer. Oh, gross. Yeah. Uh, so there's like classic, I think Code Red, and then like. Uh, What's the tropical I don't know. breeze or something? Yeah, like there's one? three flavors. The can is aggressively, uh, you know, you, it, it's like you buy this at a gas station. It looks like that. It's like Monster, but even more. It was over when like Natural Light was like uh, doing theirs. And then yeah. like. Uh, I think Travis Scott, he owns, like, Cacti. That stuff's always, like, I get, a, like, the BevMo, and yeah. it's just, like, pillars of it for sale. Like, I'll still, on sale. I'll still have, like, a Truly at a party every once in a while if it's, like, the only thing there. But, yeah, the last one I actually purchased was 
uh, the Corona hard seltzer, and it was it was like four flavors, and all of them tasted mm. like shit. I actually threw away the unfinished 12 pack because I'm like, I'm never going to drink this. <laughs> this is like the, the worst fucking thing it's I've ever tasted. It's literally like Zima and Smirnoff Ice all over again. Yeah, like. But at least when, when you know, Truly and uh, White Claw, like, you could say, relatively speaking, that those flavors are, like, subtle <laughs> to a degree. They're just sort of masking the alcohol. Like, all the new ones, it is, it's like Mike's Hard Lemonade all over again. It's just aggressively sweet. It's for people who just do not like the taste of alcohol. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're not good. Yeah. Anyways, you can go get some Mountain Dew hard seltzer now if you want, I guess. Yeah. Up to you. Congratulations. German modern pentathlon coach thrown out of Olympics for punching horse. This is one that we missed on the tail end of the uh, Olympics. Yeah, it's funny. In the episode, we're just like, we were joking about how they they treat the horses like shit and they they beat him up. And people in the comments were like, uh, no, my sister works at a a stable and they treat those horses better than they treat their own children. There were so many, like, paragraph long comments and, like, the user icon was a woman brushing a horse. Yeah. We get it. But we then, get it, you're a horse girl. I love it. Just immediately vindicated when this German woman punched a horse in the face in view of the entire world. She doesn't care. Yeah. This, this is, is what happens this to horses. This is who we are. This is what happens to bad horses. Yeah. They get punched. Speaking of the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had a viewer send us. We have a whole bunch of them over there. Not, yeah. The, we, don't, uh, we, can't, we can't get through them all right now. We have a bunch. But yeah, remember the viewer, furry, uh, the Australian supermarket the Woolworths. The furries. Woolworths or Woolies. Woolies uh, made these little trading cards, and uh, they're they, secrets. You don't know what you're gonna get. They accidentally published furry art. So we uh, imported them. Uh, D Dog uh, sent us some, and let's see what I got. Well, I got Susie O'Neill. She's just holding up a, a kangaroo. This one's not. A, Mine doesn't have furry art at all. This, this, is, this is all not furry. Hold this on. This is all just normal. They must photos. be like the collector's editions, as you get the. Yeah, furries. they're they're like, like one out of ten. They're like the rare ones. Super rares. Well, hopefully this next. Oh, one. I got one. Look yeah. at this one here. I, it, it's gonna the the focus won't work correctly, but yeah. Elliot will take it and. Take oh it yeah. Him. Oh, he's he's a he's a, a fencer. Yeah. And he's a kangaroo. I'm gonna put like. it right here on the pole, the pole that hides the crack in the set. There you go. There he is. And then you get the full size one. Yeah. So we have uh, about fifty of these. Yeah. Uh, we might be the only people in Amer- in America. That have the furry collectible Woolworths. You shouldn't have wasted it on that. There's a lot of money in this. No, nah, I think that's uh, it's Go gonna on. be timeless. R slash furry. You like hey. in a year, someone's gonna be like, why do they have furry stickers all over their fucking set? Yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you for sending those in. That was uh, very nice of you. Uh, thank you very much, D Dog. Yeah, we'll open some more of them uh, in the future. Yeah. And share the results. <laughs> Yeah, all the good ones will end up sticking on the wall or something. Yeah. yeah. Russian millionaire admits killing man he mistook for bear. Was he referring to the animal or the very large gay man? Uh, the animal. Okay. He he shot a man to death, but he's like, well, I thought he was a bear, you see. So, did I really uh, commit a crime? I saw a man, like, I saw a, a shape outside by the trash cans, and I was like, why would a human be by the trash cans? So, I, uh, I fired a gun at it, mm-hmm. and down it went, and I thought, oh, good. I've killed the bear. Someone please come get this bear. Uh, so, yeah. Nothing, nothing sketchy about this at all. I'm just a Russian oligarch who uh, was caught doing a little bit of killing, but it's fine. I had my reasons. It was a mistake. We all make mistakes. It was a mistake. It was a goof. It was a goof. Yeah. I fudged up. Oopsie. Oops. Now let's let bygones be bygones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Woman using gun's laser sight to play with cat shoots friend. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> People are so fucking stupid. Uh... Hey, not all gun over. Some of us, some of us are responsible. Some of you are really fucking aren't. Yeah, it's also uh, very dangerous to have a deadly weapon in the hands of someone who is irresponsible. Ooh, a laser sight. What's it attached to? A handgun? Well, I just won't squeeze it all the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just pull out. Yeah. Now the clips removed. I don't know anything about how chambering. This is a classic rounds works. video that's been on the internet forever, where like the girl chambers it and like pulls it and or she puts the uh, the clip in and puts one in the chamber and then takes the clip out. And is yeah. like, Well, it's safe now. Boom. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I know nothing about guns, and I still know. You still haven't shot one, huh? No. We still got to get you to the shooting range. Yeah. It's been, one of these actually, days. now, at this point, it's been years for me. Um, but, uh, yeah. I've been wanting to go for a, a while, fun. but COVID, a COVID got in the way. I don't really feel like going down to the range right now. <laughs> Being in close quarters? Being in close quarters and, like, close quarters with a certain type of person. 
Right. Well, and that was because of all the <laughs> because of COVID and all that, you got more liberal gun owners back over there trying to learn how to use. I them. know, I know, but still, uh, liberal gun owners like yourself. Not not ideal. Hey man, in this house we love everybody. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. In this house we love handguns, shotguns, <laughs> rifles. Yeah, assault we, weapons. We like the Bump old stocks. We like hunting rifles. We like the AR style ones that you can mount all your fucking little gadgets to. We love them all. Yeah. They are fun to shoot. It's just like it's also fun to drive a sports car. Yeah. I don't I don't have a sports car. Yeah, that's I mean that's my my stance. I'm like, yeah, guns are cool. They're You go to Vegas and shoot an assault rifle. Yeah. Well, someday I will. I hear I at, at the range. At the range. At the range where oh, you pay money. Shit. And uh yes. I was not trying to make a joke at all. It's like they literally no, they, have a fucking gun range yeah. where you can shoot high capacity. It's weapons. expensive. It's like a hundred dollars to fire a yeah. uh like actual belt fed machine gun for like ten seconds. Mm-hmm. But at the uh, LA cool gun feeling. range, you on your birthday, you get to shoot the shotgun for free. I don't know if they still do it, but it was like if you went on your birthday and bought a certain amount of like yeah. rounds with a, a group that you were with, they'd let you shoot the uh, 12 gauge. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, one of these days. Yeah, it's no, it's great. In the in uh, with proper safety precautions. Uh, yeah. In a, in a, I mean, like, yeah, just don't attach a. Uh, don't attach a laser sight to it, and then and then use the gun to play with a cat. You'll love the feeling it gives you afterwards. <laughs> it's almost an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. It really That's makes you I, feel like God. That's what I hear. No, I don't need that anymore. <laughs> I like feeling powerless. Yeah. It centers me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my feet on the ground. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the type of person you want to give that to. <laughs> uh, man tries to rob bank, fails as staff couldn't understand his handwriting. Classic. Yeah, yeah. and it, yeah, they, they have a picture of the note in the article, and it's like, yeah, what the fuck is that? What are you trying to say, old man? Just speak up. Just say what you're saying. No, read the note. I can't. It's you, you it's sir. Just, uh, there are other people in line here. So. Can you wait? Can you move aside? Um, but yeah, so the guy didn't even get. He, he gave up, but they kept the note there, and then like someone an hour later, they're like, oh, he was oh. trying to rob us. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they, uh, yeah, they called the cops, and because he was on camera, like, yeah, he's going to jail for attempted robbery, despite uh, 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 achieving nothing. Sir, what is your name? I'll write it. I will only write it. There you go. Uh, yeah, we're going to have our code breakers working in shifts on that. I don't know. I can't read his handwriting. His name sounds like one of those cats from the movie Cats. Yeah. Scribble shank. Anyway, final headline. Oklahoma parents hire actor dressed as Bigfoot to surprise daughter celebrating her sixth birthday. Children traumatized. This was a my kids. They love Bigfoot. This was a TikTok, and yeah, they chose the scariest fucking Bigfoot costume. There's only a like, what is there a non-scary Bigfoot costume? This one was like kind of realistic looking. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it uh, it's not popular enough to be mass produced. And yeah, they're they're having this little kid's birthday party, and like they see, they're like, oh, look in the yard, honey, and it's like it looks like a fucking like orangutan. Holding like balloons and being like, ah, and then coming up to the window. And then, yeah, these little kids are just screaming. They're freaking the fuck out because, yeah, they're doing they're, they're doing well, the natural like, reaction. Chewbacca kind of looks like Bigfoot. Yeah, but. Maybe the kids thought it was Chewbacca mm, and they're scared of Chewbacca. No, no. Chewbacca gave me a hug at Disneyland and yeah, it was he's very, very nice. nice. He's a nice Wookiee. Yeah. There was someone in, in Southern California. I saw it on one of the subreddits that was dressing up like Bigfoot and walking around. Uh, on one of the hiking trails. So we got our own here. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's a fun crime. Yeah. I don't think it's a crime, even. It's not a crime. It's it's just... Just uh, spices things up a little bit. just good times. Until they uh, I- inevitably get shot. That's the problem with any- doing anything like that in this country. I mean, over in Russia, you can get shot for just being yeah. near the trash cans. But yeah, in the U.S., it's even worse. You see... like. You want to dress up like uh, Bigfoot, that's I'm dangerous. finally going to be the one to kill Bigfoot. Yeah. Ooh, that's Bigfoot. There's now ne- he's never been caught alive, so I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot him right now. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. If you haven't seen our uh, big rundown on Mike Lindell's cyber symposium and all the chaos that went along with it, please check out our most recent episode of News Dump. Uh, also, that we did a whole episode about the recent climate change report for Tech News Day. Uh, thank you for joining us. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Get us in that algorithm. Leave a comment, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.